ready for the interview And if you get a cue live on a laptop Watch what I'm gonna do Welcome to the show Let them know we got a point of view Hey, yo, let's have a combo Say what you feel, be real That's the motto Real talk pronto Dr. D, PhD, hit the intro Hold up, wait Gotta be social Network global A home for the local Gotta be social Network global A home for the local Okay, we're on, Kathy. We're here. Got it. We are here. Kathy K here, strictly anonymous. Big shout out to Layla London for connecting us together. Yes, I love Layla. It's How like, great you is know, she? She's awesome. She's she's fantastic. She came on my show, then I went on her show, and a lot of times I don't get on other people's show as much. I'm just always interviewing people. I'm always on the other end of this, typically. <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm usually not getting interviewed, but uh, yeah. I love this stuff. I love talking about uh, things like sex and all different categories. But, you know, what you're doing, I think, is really interesting. The kind of the secret lives of people. They call in, correct, and talk to you? Totally. Yeah, they're anonymous to me, too. I really, you know, I don't need to know where someone's from or their real name or anything like that. I want to get to, like, the story, you know? So, I always tell people, call me from a fake number. I change everybody's voices and I tell them, make up a name, email me from a phony email, you know, and giving people that kind of uh, place and space helps, uh, you know, the the truth come out, especially with the kinds of stories I get. (laughs) How did you get into this? It was by accident. I mean, my listeners have heard this story before, but it really happened, like I said, by accident. I I did want to have a podcast and I wanted to call an advice show because I probably like you, anyone who's like interviewing people, I love peeling back the layers. I love dissecting things. I like analyzing things and I like helping people and just, I like human nature, psychology shit, right? So I wanted a call in advice show where I could do that because all my friends were like irritated by me doing it with them. Right? So <laughs> I was like, I'm going to start a show and like have people that want to be dissected and talk to me and want my help. And like, that's what I'm going to do. And so I decided to start a call in advice show just about like love and stuff. It was totally not going to be what I have. And my friend who told me to start a show was like, you know, get a bunch of episodes in the bag before you even start your show. So I had no title, no nothing but I needed callers for my show. And I really thought my show was going to suck. I was like really nervous. So I didn't want anyone to know that I was doing it because I didn't want to tell everyone I was doing it. Then they go, listen, it was bad. Right. So I wanted to do it on the DL and I needed to find people to call in. So I went on to Craigslist and swear to God, I was just like being cheap. Like I went into the community section and the regular sections on Craigslist first, but Mm -hmm. they, they cost money right? So the only place to advertise for free on Craigslist were were the personals, you know, those real, the, you know, men for men, women for women, casual encounters. So I wound up putting an ad in like every single category. And like, I always say, I like hit gold. I got the craziest emails with the craziest stories (laughs) and it sort of happened like that, you know? And then after I taped like five or six episodes, it started to be like, let's be anonymous. And then the name came and then it just became about that. And I had to like work Craigslist for the first two years. That's where, how I got all my callers. I had to go find them. I posted tons of ads. I responded to ads. I was like scouring Craigslist, uh, you know, 24 seven in every state in, you know, the United States. And thank God by the time Craigslist went under, uh, my show was big enough that people emailed me, but that's Mm -hmm. how I got people. And that's how my show got started. Wow. I think it's a great story because often like like you look at your show on like YouTube and stuff, it's a pretty large show from yeah. what I see. But you yeah, know, people don't know the story of how something like that becomes larger. So it's amazing that Craigslist was the yeah. origin. I always wondered how you found people for this. Yes, in the beginning. And then there were times I like I never thought I could like, you know, do a duplicate episode or something. So I was always scrambling because I yeah. learned very early on, you're going to do a show, you know, it's your business. You say you're going to, you know, have something every Sunday night at 8 p.m. You have to stick to that forever, you know? So every Sunday I needed a caller. And sometimes I would be last minute trying to get somebody. And like I said, I was just busting up every 
Craigslist site in every state, sending out emails, posting ads. And then sometimes when I was really desperate and it would happen, I would go on adult friend finders and I had a fake account there. And I would start <laughs> busting, I would start messaging people there, a scrambling for somebody with an interesting, crazy, hot, weird story, you know? <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah. Okay, so in the beginning, I, it was a hustle. It is a, uh, everything's a hustle in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder when you started getting these stories, listening to these stories, you yeah. know, you're the voyeur almost with all these stories, yeah. stories. What came to mind when you first started hearing these stories? It was fascinating to me. I mean, I was always a girl. I have my girlfriends. I'm a girl's girl, but I also always had a lot of guy friends that I could hang with the guys. It wasn't like a stretch for me to be very open about SEX and stuff. You know, the fact that it turned out that I had a show about sex isn't like some of my friends would be like, yeah, duh. But it wasn't like I swear I set out to that. But it really surprised me, like a lot of the fetish stuff. And there are things now that I just know about. And I know for the past seven years, because I've been doing my show. But in the beginning, there was a lot of stuff I didn't know about. So I was constantly being surprised about what I was learning uh, about what people are into, you know, like stuff that I thought in the beginning I had never heard about. And now, because I have people calling into my show for seven years and I've talked to hundreds of people that are maybe into the cuckold scenario that that exists and it doesn't, you know, it's not just that first guy I talked to. It's like once I posted that episode, you know, I would get hundreds of emails and then tons of people. Then there's this whole community. And I'm like, oh, my God, now I know all the stuff mm. that people do. But it was surprising at first to me. What was the most surprising thing about kind of the sexual nature of people? Um, you know, I, none of it was really surprising because I think I was always the type of person that knew like this stuff was going on, but nobody was really talking about it, you know? So it was great to finally be getting people like in my generation really, you know, talking about what they've been sweeping under the rug for a long time, all these secret life stuff, you know? That, like I said, I never believed wasn't happening, but here I was getting the real stories, you know? They were crazier than I could have ever imagined, but a lot of the stuff that I also found out was like the fetish stuff, you know, like, I mean, pantyhose fetish, foot fetish stuff. Like that was when I would actually go looking on Craigslist for people to call in. And so I was looking to see what was posted. I mean, those were the two things that it was just like tons of, tons of ads of guys, you know? And uh, so it was just like, just all that kind of stuff being revealed to me it was super interesting. But like I said, it wasn't like I didn't know. I just, nobody was talking about it. And yeah. that's like, I, like what I wound up really loving about my show and why ultimately it winds up being exactly the show that I wanted. I did want to help people. And my show does help people because there are a lot of people, I think the gen younger generation is different, but in my age range, you know, there's a lot of people that had to, you know, you know, hide and have a lot of stuff in their, their closets, you know, people living total, you know, yeah. secret lives and stuff. And so I create this space where people could come on and sometimes talk about things for the first time in their life. And it's very helpful to them as well as people that find that episode and like, oh my God, I'm not alone, you know? Uh, what episode did you do that you had like the most impact on you maybe early on when you started and said, there's something here, like bigger? You mean as far as like a trend or like, I mean, each one, I mean, okay, if we're just talking sex, like there are certain times that I've hit on something and I'm like, whoa, gangbangs, who knew that everyone and their mother loves a fucking gangbang really? all post, you know? <laughs> yes. Like I know the things that get the most clicks. I know the things that are the most highly downloaded. And one thing that really surprised me, I know the opposite. You know, I remember one of the first people that were on my show was um, a BDSM guy, master, mm -hmm. a master something or other was his name. He came on a couple of times. He's in my, uh, in my intro when I say the only good advice I have for you is rehide your whips and chains. That's like a part of my <laughs> intro. Right. I mean that, you know, this was the guy who was driving around with his get shit in his car. It's so dumb. But anyway, I really thought, you know, cause 50 shades of gray it was around that time, seven years ago, it was like the hottest thing, you know, everybody was buying that book. And I would say BDSM to this day never like goes out and is a big hit. It's actually like, like low level downloads, whereas mm. stuff like gang things. I mean, I had Christine 
gang bang five black guys with her husband's permission. Like that episode, like I can't even tell you. Like on YouTube, it probably has <laughs> 400,000 hits. But I just, anytime I, Betty has gang bangs, like she's a new gang bang Betty I had on. You know, gang bangs are like super, super pop- popular. So those kinds of trends, if you think like what was like impactful, like there's certain times where I hit on something and I see like, oh my God, my audience like loves this. And let, let me go get some more of this because this is what people like. And since I've been doing it for seven years and putting out so much content, I kind of know the stuff that's is going to get a lot, like the most hits and the stuff that's going to be a little bit on the bottom. Why? And why that has kind of surprised like, but why? me. Like, what? But why gang bangs? Why do you think that appeals so much? I don't know. Cause I'm not into like, that was never <laughs> like my fantasy. And I fantasize about a lot of different kinds of scenarios, right? I don't know. You know, just the way the wind blows. Sometimes you could yeah. get into anything for a week or there were never like gang bang for me, but I, you know, I don't know, but it really, I have to say people go crazy for gangbangs. I don't know if it's wow. because it's so hardcore or extreme. I don't know. But Christine's story was fucking fascinating for me because she called in one time and it really was like, this was a girl's, I found her on Craigslist or she found me and was like, I just want to tell you, no, she found me. It was like, I had, you know, um, a white woman. I married. I, my husband gave me permission because my biggest fantasy was to be gang banged by a bunch of black guys. And I remember someone got really mad at me that I put black guys in the title. It's like, no, but that was very specific. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? To what she wanted. This was exactly like her fantasy. And she got the okay from her husband. And it was like the biggest success episode. So I was like, you know, early on, this is, you know, when I'm still scouring Craigslist for a guest, I decide to beg her to come back on and give me a part two. Like what happened? Like now, what are you up to? You know? And let me tell you, I thought I was going to get another hot episode, but the second episode was so much more revealing Mm. and it took such a like different turn. And then to this day, like, I mean, she's called in probably five times in the store and she's actually married to one of the guys that fucked her in the gangbang. No. One of those black guys, swear to God, married, successful, happy, friends what? with the ex-husband. Yes, but that did not happen immediately. You know, that happened over years, over time of talking to her. And I have every part of that journey in an episode. But like I said, I went back the second time. I thought I was getting another hot episode, but instead I got this really in-depth look at what was really going on in their relationship. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't as simple as it seemed, you know, there was a lot of like interesting dynamics and you saw like the cracks in their relationship and you're like, Oh my God, these people are headed for a divorce. Maybe if you thought that the first time now you realize it's happening. And then, like I said, as the story goes on, you want, she winds up and she's cheating on her husband at the second time with the guy for the gangbang. Wow. And then, you know, two years later, she's married with him, still living with them, successful and happy. <laughs> but I love stories like that. I don't, I, I'm not so much like the sex stories are fine. And my audience loves that kind of stuff, but I love like the life lessons and the real deeper things that are going on in stories. So I loved where that second episode went because I thought like this is real life you know what I mean it's not just on surface oh this is a hot story this is what was really going down with the relationship so I that's the kind of stuff that really blows my mind and that I love actually was there ever a story that crossed the line for you that you couldn't do yeah yeah any kind yes absolutely and recently um I had a couple guys call in and it's like, cause there was one guy recently that called in and was like, I'm attracted to my mom. I'm like, okay, Whoa. like you haven't done anything. Yeah. It was like anything like incest. I can't do it. I did air his episode cause nothing had happened. It was just a fantasy. Like, you know, but uh, after that episode aired, I got all these people um, writing me, you know, yeah. uh, for their real stories. And, you know, I take this one guy who was trying to tell me he was like a cock and he wanted his wife to be with a woman. But it turned out there was this whole other angle with his mom breastfeeding him till he was like 18. And I was like, you know what? Yes. I can't do this. I'm not going to air this episode. I will not air yeah. stuff like that. So anything that's non consensual, um, I don't do like I had a guy on um, recently who a couple of years ago, maybe he was uh, peeping Tom, like he looked up girl skirts. Mm. And I and I told him before we even spoke, but he said in his email, like, listen, I, you know, I, I do want to stop. So when I hear something like that, I'm like, OK, this is going to be like an advice show. You know, I'm going to turn this guy around because 
it is wrong what he's doing, right? That's yes. not consensual. That's like fucking, you're like almost like a criminal. Like exactly. you've been in a lot of trouble. So, you know, I made sure before me and him got on the phone that, you know, he knew what he was doing, what wasn't right, and he wanted to stop. And then it became this amazing, really intense episode that a lot of people have found that have been like, oh my God, thank you for that. Because it was about sort of conquering an addiction and stopping doing something that's wrong. So I'll have something like that on as long as, like I said, I, the person is coming from a place like I'm doing this and it's not right. Like, how do I stop? But I'll never do it promoting it. Like, I'm not going to talk to a guy who thinks it's fucking hot to look up a girl's skirt that doesn't know about it. Like, right. that's not, uh, you know, that might be a turn on to some people, but that's not how I'm going to turn my audience on. And those aren't the stories I want to tell. So yeah. that's my line, you know? Do you have, I mean, since seven years, is there, I know you talked about Christine's story, but is that yeah. your favorite story? Or do you have one that just stands out? You're like, this was like my favorite one to go back and listen to or conduct the, you know, the, the whole podcast episode. I have a couple of those, you know, I have a lot of those and they're all, like I said, I typically like the deeper stuff, yeah. you know, and those are the ones a lot of times that stand out to me. I'm a sober person since I'm like, for like 19 years, I think yeah. now. So any kind of like quitting drinking or quitting any kind of thing, or like I had a guy who was molested by his mother and he acted out sexually, like and that was an amazing conversation. So I tend to always go, those always tend to be like my favorite ones, but you know, and so, and I have a lot of those. There was another one that was like a guy. It was interesting because I talked to two guys back to back whose wives cheated on them. And one guy, his story was my wife cheated on him and now I'm fucking escorts. You know, that's the title, like, you know, and yeah. that's how he was working through his stuff. And, you know, we could all understand not being able to get out of, you know, sort of work through the anger and, to, you know, now acting out and doing this and now cheating back, you know, but then like two days later, I had another guy who happened to have his wife who cheated on him. And the story was so different and it was so amazing. And there was such a different kind of ending. And I thought it was great. These two episodes to show like how, you know, two people could experience the same thing, but depending on what they do and how they work through it, whether they work through it the right way, which is the harder way, or the wrong way, which is the easy way to just sweep it under the rug and go in denial, right. the different place they wind up in. Because the second guy who happened to be one of my favorite episodes was, you know, his wife cheated on She also got pregnant by the guy and Whoa. they kept the baby, okay? Uh -huh. And they are now swingers living their best life. Whoa. So, yeah. And the other guy, you know, the other guy was fucking escorts. And like I said, listen, I don't I don't look at the other guy that was fucking escorts and judge him either. We could understand that path as but and it's actually harder to understand the one path that the other guy took, which was the better path that ended, you know, in a happy way. But I love the sort of difference of that, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I it's. I, there's so many that I love that stand out to me. There's one that's like, it's just a simple one. It's called Mark fucked his stepmom. Okay. Now that is not incest. That wasn't someone who <laughs> he really grew up with. And it was like such a great story from beginning, middle to end. You couldn't believe it. I mean, sometimes like crazy stuff that I'm like, oh my God, you just can't make this shit up. I like that stuff. So I like it all. I'm a reality TV girl. I like, I yeah. like human being stuff. So I like all the stories. And you feel like when people come on, um, by the way, for everyone, Strictly Anonymous, the show is amazing. It's really good. Are you, do you feel that people feel like they can open up pretty quickly to you when they start? Yes. Going? Yes. I, you know, the guy, the guy at the bodega, I live in New York City, the guy at the corner of bodega opens up to me. Like I'm one of those people that are very easy to talk to. Yep. I could sit in a park and sit down next to someone and get their whole life story in 10 minutes and they'll be like, I can't <laughs> believe I'm telling you this. And I think what it is, is because I really am naturally curious and I love learning about people because I just, I just do. And I'm never coming from a place of judgment. I'm coming from a place of pure curiosity. Uh, that people open up. I think people could sense stuff like that. So I've always yeah. been someone that's people tell things to. I'm always that person that people come to and are very open. I bring, I'm very open myself about everything I've been through as well. And I think that that disarms people and allows them to do the same. So, and a lot of times 
you know, callers now who call in, they're like, oh my God, it's so weird. I've been listening to your show for two years and now yeah. I'm talking to you and I'm so nervous. And like, <laughs> you know, they, that by the end of the conversation at the end, they're like, oh my God, that was so easy. You know, I don't know why I was nervous. Like you were so easy to talk to. So I make people feel really comfortable right away because like I said, if this is what I love to do, I just like people and talking to people. And that uh, I think is picked up by the person I'm talking to. How was the doing this show for this long and hearing all these stories, how has it personally influenced your life? Well, you know, I, I just hit my 500th episode and I interviewed myself for it. And I asked for questions, awesome. you know, and everyone said in my questions, like everyone wants to know SEX stuff, you know, moving forward. And I think like, you know, I was always somebody when I was super young that was like really open and curious about sex. I never had an open relationship, but I tried many different kinds of relationships because they can never fit into that box of like, oh, total monogamy long term. I never had a 10 year relationship. I never got married. Um, so I think, you know, doing my show and stuff really cleared a lot of confusion up. And I say this a lot on my show because a lot of like the older generation is really irritated by all the labels and stuff that goes down mm -hmm. nowadays, you know, it was like, oh, all these labels and stuff. But I feel like I kind of love them. I feel like it puts a lot of different things in its place and it clears people's minds and it helps people feel like they fit in some place. There was no place for me to fit in when I was younger. It was, you were either, you know, married, heterosexual, you know, straight, single or in a relationship or married, right? Like there's three things. There was nothing else. Now there are so many different things you could choose from and do and it's cool. And uh, it's helped me really understand that I was probably never wired for a monogamous relationship and not because I want variety, but because I don't feel like I believe in it for the other person so much. And I've always felt like to sort of be really in love with someone, not own them sexually is probably like top of the mountain as far as spiritual evolution. <laughs> and I was always like, I want to get to that place, you know? <laughs> and so my show has really opened me up and like I said, cleared my mind and made me realize where I exist. And I think, you know, moving forward, I wouldn't have, I would have an open relationship and set it up the way I wanted to. And now there's more, you know, there's, it, there's just easier paths for me to understand how to do that. Yeah, I would imagine, I mean, anything you do for this amount of time, you have to glean mm -hmm. some knowledge from it and some insight yeah. into who you are as a person and how it's affecting you mm -hmm. um, and how you move forward uh, in that. Yeah. Do you ever uh, end up having like connections with people call in, like actually get to know them outside of the call in aspect? No, I mean, listen, there are certain people even, you know, certain fans and listeners of the show, as well as people who have called in on more than one occasion, there's a, you know, people who I talk to more and there's more emailing back and forth, but I'm super professional. I have very clear boundaries. I never cross those lines with anybody, nor would I be interested in doing that. Of course, a lot of people try to push those boundaries a lot of times, you know, mm -hmm. but I know how to keep them in place. And I think, people would assume because I'm talking at quote unquote, like, you know, guys that want to like give a 24 hour blowjob challenge or, you know, sniff women's panties that like, <laughs> Oh, I probably hit up by all these people all the time, but not really. Most people are super respectful and they know their space. And I, like I said, I keep my boundaries a lot. Of, you know, I've been asked out and all those things and yeah. people have tried to get to know me more so, but I cut the cord. Um, when I'm done, I try to, you know, I'm not one. The reason why I did my show as opposed to went to school and become a therapist is because I'm like good for that one great conversation. I could give you inspiration, fill you up and then, you know, go do your thing. You know, I don't want to own you or be like rule your life or tell you what to do every fucking day. You know what I mean? Like I want to give you the tools and go out and do your thing. Right. So that's kind of how I that's like my vibe, you know, yeah. and what I stick by. <laughs> you have to like, uh, give me some information on this. What the hell is the 24 hour blowjob challenge? Oh, there was a guy, he was a, he was like a couple, he went from, okay, this guy, Trey, I found him on Craigslist. 
Craig's just really was like the gift that kept on giving. Craig, he was a guy that was really into swallowing jizz. I mean, there was one time where it's like, if you, like, how much is that in ounces? Like, tell me by like a, it was like a soda can, like filled with what? jizz that he had. He loved swallowing it. He was, and he had, he had these set, like, literally, like, it's Trey's like 24 hour blowjob channel. And then he called in like three more times because then he had a 48 hour one, then he had a five day, like, he kept upping his game. But, he had like, he had a guy that worked for him that set it up. He had it at a hotel. I mean, these are the things that I hear about, but yeah, it was a blowjob challenge that he had set up. It was very, you know, by the book. And he would tell me like, oh, you know, I could tell who was married and who wasn't because you could see like they would take their rings off in the car, but he's like, I could see the ring, you know, the indentation from the yeah. ring on the finger. It's like little things like that is so interesting to me. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, I was like, what is that? I'm like, well, it's, it's the funny thing. Like when I talked to Lay- Layla has been on my show a few times and just some of the stories, they're just so funny or they're just mm-hmm. surprising. And like when she was telling me she went to this, essentially it was kind of like an orgy basically, yeah. but it was like, there were crock pots there and people it was like a, it, it was like a potluck weird. It was yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> it's like, why do you want to eat chili before doing all that? Gross, like, totally. How strange yeah. is that? I thought that was one of the strangest stories I've ever heard. Like, yeah, I love those details. I mean, I always, uh, you know, I get a lot of comments like, oh, stop interrupting your guests. But I like those little, I want people to paint the picture. I want to know the, yeah. those like random things. If someone sends me a picture, I'm always looking at what's in the background. You know, I like those kind of details because I want to, like, I think we all have our ideas of like, where these things take place and what's the vibe and, and we always think of things in like the movies but like yeah. what is it really like I mean and I've heard from some people who have went to orgies and they're they know like famous people and they're in LA or Beverly Hills and it's it is like what you maybe imagine like beautiful people all fucking naked in a mansion you know but then I've heard from the regular person in the middle of the country that it's like straight up like more like what Layla was saying and so they yeah. all different kinds of stories exist and that's what's interesting and that's why I'll always talk to you know I'll have the same topics over and over again because each person that's a swinger is going to have a totally different story and it's going to always be unique and I'm always going to learn something now. What's a a kind of a story that keeps coming back up lately or maybe a trend that you're noticing um, in people wanting to talk about their stories, maybe sexually? Well, you know, I think at the beginning, one of the ones that like, oh, besides the gangbang was like a lot of bi guys, but secretly bi guys, like I'm married. And the minute my wife walks out the door, like, you know, another guy's coming over and we're sniffing our wives' panties together. And then we're jerking each other off. Like, you know, so there was a lot of that, a lot of secret guys being secretly bi, you know, and that was like a lot. And like, you know, and then, oh, so there's always trends because I'll have one of those on and then I'll get like so many emails, you know, right now I have a lot of cuck stuff, you know, and the cuckold is the, the man. There's a true cuckold that really wants humiliation to be part of the, uh, you know, the scenario, but they don't, it doesn't have to be there, but there's this whole thing where guys, a lot of guys just really like to see their girl get fucked by somebody else. And that's, my audience loves that stuff. I have a lot of people calling in, a lot of cuck stuff going on right now, as, lo- as well as a lot of cross dressers. I had to start a Fetish Fridays thing because, of course, my fetish episodes, you know, they're more niche, so they get less downloads, but they're still reaching a lot of people. And I still want to reach those people and have episodes for those people. So I just started something called Fetish Fridays where I have specific fetishes and you know cross-dressing is a big one and I have a lot of cross-dressers wanting to come on and tell their stories because there's just no place for them to do that so I I started a cross-dressing tier over my patreon as well just for cross-dressers and I have one for people who I call hosers like guys who are at the pantyhose fetish (laughs) so you know it all takes off whatever I put out there I start to you know people find it and then they email me and then I have more people calling in but I think cuck is the big thing and, you know, cuck queens. And then the, because of the new labels, like I get a lot of polyamorous people. Yeah. I remember, you know, a couple of years, like five or six years ago, having my first poly uh, couple on and a couple poly people that were t- disastrous, at, you know, trying to be poly. And now I find, uh, you know, people who are professional uh, and could talk about it and are doing it uh, really well. And that's, 
something that I see nowadays. And I've had a lot more polyamorous people on. What do you think is driving that? I don't know. I think the younger generation, I mean, the people that are less disastrous tend to be, you know, the polyamorous people are typically younger, the ones who are really doing it and trying it. And, you know, I don't know if it'll just be a fad for them in 10 years from now, will those poly people still be poly? I don't know, but they're trying, you know, Mm -hmm. and I give them that credit and they're really, you know, they're, it's a consensual and it's something they really talk about. And uh, a lot of them are on the forefront trying to educate other people, you know, so I don't know if it's because my show is so out there and it's bigger that people find me and that's why I find those people, you know, I don't know, but uh, I think that the younger generation is super open and trying yeah. all different kinds of things. And they don't, you know, like I said, when I was growing up, there was like two boxes you could live in and now there's so many, why not? Yeah. And I just feel like I was born in the wrong time because these <laughs> younger people are having way more fun. They have it way easier, you know, in 30 years, I'm not going to have a show no one's going to need to be fucking anonymous because, you yeah. know, it's not like people are hiding what they're into anymore. But there's still a lot of people that are alive that had to because we grew up in a different time. It was interesting. Another Layla referral. She referred yeah. to Dr. Tara, who is amazing. And yeah. she teaches, I think it's at Cal State Fullerton. Um, but mm-hmm. She teaches about sexual communication. She said so many kids in that range of like you're 18 to 23 they're super open about sexuality Mm -hmm. but they Mm -hmm. don't have sex they really don't have much sex at all oh interesting yeah well not the poly people that i have on sorry but i just had annie as polyamorous i just aired her the sunday she had a fucking foursome that would make you crash your car if you know the details (laughs) what what happened like i mean crazy gotta give up a couple of details oh oh, yeah no i'll tell you so i mean it was like crazy because of what's so interesting about her and i said this her is like you know they're so uh she was so here she is this girl that comes on and she's very into polyamory and she writes the zine and she used to have this great blog that she got pretty famous and she's a writer and she's well-spoken and she started and then you know she's just talking about this like super hot foursome she's got a husband there she's got her intimate female partner a girl who she hooks up with as well as her boyfriend you know these are all the players in that threesome and for her she loves cream pies okay now she has gone down and cleaned up the woman after her guy fucked the girl and left to come inside her she had it done to her by her girl and she just went on and on about cream pie this and cream pie that and this one fucking this one and the trains that were and all the stuff that was going on i mean it was like people that that have heard it you know are writing in like oh my god that was like super hot and what's so interesting like i said is like here you know it's like this girl who you're first hearing from and she's just very smart and very well spoken you know, and then she gets like super dirty, but it's just very matter of fact, but, you know, she really gives some real dirty details to that foursome. And then she's back to talking about polyamory and just like the smartest way. And it just yeah. she's very well-rounded. And, you know, it's, that's, I think, interesting to hear. Do you think that there's kind of this, that more people are more sexual than they lead on and when they just people you meet and things, or do you have, what's your opinion on that? think you know especially women had to really repress the stuff that they were into because there was always that madonna whore complex thing that was going on and it's true sorry but you know i can't tell you how many times i heard when i was growing up like you know what kathy like you're like the girl that you fuck you're not the girl that you marry (laughs) (laughs) because i was very open sexually i was aggressive i did whatever the fuck i wanted and i like to have sex you know and um There is that thing, though, that um, and I don't know that it's there now. And I think girls could be much more in charge of their sexuality and bring it to the surface and lead with it and do whatever the fuck they want with it now. But I think back in the day, women couldn't so much. And I think where men were repressed is, you know, listen, every girl has a girl crush. I have a girl crush. I want to make out with a girl. Yeah. I went down on a girl, but guys still can't cop to their guy crushes. You know, I still think like there's as many men out there that want to, you know, blow another guy as there were women. I just think that there's still a stigma attached to it. So I think there's a little repressed stuff with men in that place. So I think a lot of times people do keep certain things to themselves that they're into because there's a fear of, you know, someone judging them because people do get super judgy about what people do 
sexually. I don't know why, because I never did. I mean, my friends, anyone that knows me would always say like, it's like odd how Kathy is like the least judgmental person. I just don't care. And that's why it's great for me to do my show. But pe- other people do. Other people are super judgmental. Yeah. You know, and uh, and so that doesn't help people, you know, let their freak flag fly because they're petrified that either their partner or someone will be like, well, uh, ew, or, you know, you get like comments or people get freaked out. That's, yeah. a, that's an issue. Okay, so you feel that in the future, though, that, the, the, this, the, this desire or need to be strictly anonymous will, will dissolve because people are just yeah. so much more open. Yeah. These younger people. I mean, I, I, you know, Layla, you know, Layla is like the person who's like setting everyone up. She was like, Oh, I have this really great um, prostitute, Aubrey, Aubrey. Oh yeah. I've interviewed her. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, listen, I'll come on your show. I, I don't want to be on like the, the first meeting was like, I don't want to be on your show because I promote like myself and I am who I am and I'm not hiding anything. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, wait a second. Like I only create that space for people that want to do. It. I think it's yeah. actually great that you're not. And she did wind up coming on my show and it was like an amazing episode. Um, so yeah, I think the younger generation, like they're more who they are. Uh, they're not hiding shit. They could be all the things. And I think that that's only going to, that trend is only going more towards that way. Like, I don't think we're going to go away from that. So yeah, in 30 years, I won't be able to do my show, but uh, you know, the people around my age, and there's still a lot of people that are going to be live, you know, that had to live a secret life and are still living a secret life and are doing a lot of things sexually that nobody knows about. And these (laughs) people are not people that, you think exist in some world that are like, uh, you know, somebody that you think you think you live. They're like your uncle. It's like your, your aunt. Uncle. It's yeah. like your, you know, boss. It's For like sure. your coworker. <laughs> it might be your fucking boyfriend. Sorry to say, or your girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> they sound just like Aubrey. And she was like, and I was like, well, let's bust the myth of like who comes to see you. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. And she was like, yeah. oh, it's like judges, doctors, school, yeah. your second grade school teacher. Mm-hmm. It's like everybody. It's not like some person hanging out in an alley. It's like, that's, that's what I mean. It's, exactly. It's yeah. Everyone's like, oh, pervert. Like everyone yeah. thinks a pervert, quote unquote, or whoever it is. And a lot of times I'll get an email um, from a super fan that'll be like, oh my God, I love your show. It makes me feel normal. Like all those weirdos that you talk to, like, it's so great to hear that. And I'm just like, no, but like, I don't, you don't understand. Like, I don't see anybody that calls into my show as the quote unquote weirdo or a pervert or anything. The, and you wouldn't either because you probably know some of them. Okay. Yeah. And this is just one little slice of their life. You cannot define something from, you know, you can't define a person by just what they do sexually. I mean, unless you're Jeffrey Epstein and you're like a trafficking right. women, you know, right. but besides this is just, you know, that's just one part of what someone does like Aubrey says these people are upstanding citizens in society doing all kinds of things you know whether it's a janitor or your teacher or you know the CEO of a fortune 500 company that's why I always ask these people that are living a double life where the fuck do you hide your stuff because (laughs) the worst thing about it is that if these mega super powerful people die and their shit is found you know what will happen the only thing somebody will remember about them is like oh my god this is what they were doing sex yeah. these people are just so it's so salacious and people glom on to that and it's just a little part of what people do it's just a slice of the pie i mean the most people are so much more than their intimate life you know but people tune in to hear those stories and what they do but these are not like you said people in an alleyway these are just yeah. regular people doing regular things I mean, people are just so like, you're informed by like, things, you know, what you're exposed to. I mean, think about it, like, for a lot of people, I mean, how do they learn about sex? I mean, their parents, I mean, probably not. Their parents are uptight, you know, they're not going to talk about it, right? So the porn now, especially, that porn has essentially been democratized for people, essentially. Mm -hmm. So like, how so there's a lot of shame or there's just a lack of exposure to what people actually do Um, yeah mm -hmm, totally you know but i think the internet helps and that's why like uh, you know podcasts are great now because it's not like i think there is a problem learning from porn because it's so unrealistic a lot of it you know so where do maybe that's why these younger people aren't having you know 
Well, that's, that's what I don't she was know. saying. Dr. <laughs> Farrah was saying that uh, because yeah. the watching of porn is so constant with younger people, they can't get stimulated by seeing somebody in person. Yeah. Uh-huh. They have to watch porn to get stimulated to do something with an in-person. I mean, it's crazy, but it's kind of like there's a there's a downside to a lot of that stuff, too. Of course. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So there's mm-hmm. like anything it, there, you got to weigh like what's the positives of being open about this and what's the the dark side of what this could become, you know? Yeah, 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 for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's uh, I, I I find like like your show and then talking to Dr. Tara and then Aubrey and then. I had a great conversation with Eric Everhard, you know, male porn star. And uh, it's just weird. You have these perceptions of people. Yeah. And then they always blow them away. It's like, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to talk to this guy. He's going to be like really crazy. And it was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking to a very scholarly person. You know? Yeah, that's what I love. That's what I loved about Aubrey. I was like, you know, yeah. she went off at the end about all the social activism stuff yeah. that she was like into and she was like, oh, you just let me like go on a rant. I said, because I think it's important. I think it's important for people to know that you could be a prostitute, right? Yeah. And you could also be socially conscious and actually really out there doing something and be super smart and a really, uh, you know, someone who's really giving to society in the right way. And I think that that's important for people to hear that side of things as well, you know, but people have a real, people love to put, you know, make things black or white, you know, or just see someone as one thing. And I, I, you know, that I hate because that's not reality, but I think people love to do that. It's a way of making themselves feel better or whatever it is, psychology behind that. But, you know, I I try to go against that by showing people that it's never black and white. There's so many different colors to all kinds of people, you know, just when you think, oh, a prostitute is this way, I'm going to show you that Look at what she's fucking doing. You know, she's yeah. changing the world and the laws and the stuff. You know, how amazing is that? Uh, yeah, and actually, it's so funny how this mirrors it because I was just uh, emailing Aubrey not that long ago, and she was saying because I follow up with all of my guests, just yeah, to check in with them, nurture yeah. the relationship. She's oh, I'm doing this activism stuff. I'm like, we should yeah. come back on the show. Let's talk about. It. She's like, I would love to. Yeah, and just to deep. Where we're deepening her story. Mm -hmm. Uh, beyond just the the prostitute aspect of it and that there's just more late people have lots of layers basically and that's what I like like I said I was never the type of person that's like surface I hate small talk okay I like (laughs) real talk I can't do small talk like actually walking into like a social function and saying hi and being phony like that is so uncomfortable for me yet I could like like I said talk to someone in a park bench that I never talked to and talked to them for an hour and get them to tell me yeah. everything. Like, that's what I'm good at. That's what I love to do. I like to go deep. I'm never there just for the sex stuff. I, yeah. I get those details from my audience and, you know, they are in all my episodes. So it's never like a bait and switch, but I, what I do love about my show is that I feel like I do draw people into this like salacious story and they're yeah. going to hear these hot things, but I feel like they learn lesson sometimes and they see things sometimes maybe in a different way and that's important to me to do i love it i mean yeah i think thank you so much for giving me some of your time today yeah no it was fun yeah i just like meeting people and having connections and every new person you meet is another story is another just uh, another opportunity to meet someone and, and, and deepen that connection. So um, yeah. And my story leads to 500 stories. I have 500 episodes <laughs> for people to go listen to. So go check out my show. <laughs> yeah. Please let everybody know uh, the show where they can listen to it, the whole deal. Yeah. So you could listen to my show, Strictly Anonymous podcast on any podcast app. You could also listen to it on YouTube, Strictly Anonymous podcast. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at strict anonymous and now i have a call in confessions hotline so if you just want to call in and confess <laughs> something i changed the voices there too that's 347-420-3579 but i'll send you the links to um you know my uh or just you know my thing for instagram and twitter or whatever of course we'll be definitely putting it out there and uh i want to drive more people to listen to what you're doing it's it's a pretty i've listened in it's pretty awesome um Kathy, thank you so much. Again, big shout out to Layla. I'm going to tell her 
We had an awesome conversation. She'd be so great. Cool. She was so excited for us to talk. She was like, oh, you're awesome. Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. We all talk to each other. It's very incestuous. Like me, I know. you, Aubrey. <laughs> I know. Like every, just going because she's just like, here, talk to this person. Talk to that person. Yeah, talk yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's get it done. You know? So. Yeah, that's great. That's great. It was great talking to you, Dar Darian. Thanks so much for having me on your you show. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye.